For at TV, the world is thinking. There is no question that the neoconservatives, one of the core constituencies in the lobby, were the main driving force behind the war. But they were supported by key organizations in the lobby like APAC. Now that the war has gone south, it's common to hear Israel's supporters say that the main organizations in the lobby did not push for war. But that's not true. This point is made clear in a May 2004 editorial that appeared in the Forward, which, as Steve pointed out, is a weekly Jewish newspaper. It's based in New York. I want to read this editorial from May 2004 that appeared in the Forward. As President Bush attempted to sell the war in Iraq, America's most important Jewish organizations rallied as one to his defense. In statement after statement, community leaders stressed the need to rid the world of Saddam Hussein and his weapons of mass destruction. Concern for Israel's safety rightfully factored in to the deliberations of the main Jewish groups. One sometimes hears the argument today that APEC took no position on the Iraq war and certainly did not advocate it. But this is not true either. First of all, this claim fails the common sense test, as APEC usually supports what Israel wants, and Israel certainly wanted the United States to invade Iraq. Second, there is hard evidence that APEC lobbied for the war. For example, APEC's executive director, Howard Kaur, told the New York Sun in January 2003 that one of APEC's successes over the past year was, quote, quietly lobbying Congress to approve the use of force in Iraq, end of quote. The neoconservatives, of course, were the main driving force behind the war. They initiated the idea of using force to topple Saddam in two letters written to President Clinton in early 1998. Over the next five years, and especially after 9-11, they pushed relentlessly for war against Iraq. No other group or institution in the United States was seriously committed to invading Iraq over that five-year period. Indeed, there was significant opposition to invading Iraq even after 9-11 within the State Department, the intelligence community, and the uniform military. The neoconservatives are, by their own admission, deeply committed to Israel. In fact, many of them are connected with key organizations in the lobby, like the American Enterprise Institute and the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. Our argument here, it should be emphasized, is not that the neoconservatives or the leaders of the principal organizations in the lobby were pushing a war that was in Israel's national interest, but was not in America's national interest. On the contrary, they believed that invading Iraq was in both America's and Israel's national interest. For the neoconservatives, what is good for Israel is good for the United States and vice versa. Although the neoconservatives were deeply committed to war with Iraq, they could not make it happen by themselves. They failed to convince President Clinton to go to Baghdad, and they had little luck selling the war in the first eight months of the Bush administration. It was the events of 9-11 that created circumstances where they could help convince both President Bush and Vice President Cheney that invading Iraq was a smart idea. But without Bush and Cheney on board, there would not have been a war. I might, I might add that Steve and I also argue that had Al Gore been elected president in 2000, we do not think that there would have been a war against Iraq in 2003. All of this is to say that the neoconservatives and the lobby more generally were necessary to have the war, but by themselves 
They could not make it happen. One final point is in order about the Iraq war. We're sometimes accused of saying that that war was a Jewish war. Nothing could be further from the truth. We pointed out in the book, as we did in the article, that polls taken before the war show that American Jews were 10% less likely to support the war than the general American public. Our argument is that the war was due in large part to the influence of the Israel lobby, especially the neoconservatives within it, not the American Jewish community. And as Steve emphasized, the lobby is defined by its political agenda, not religion or ethnicity.